kidney stone disease as you know is a very common problem we will today learn how to make illustrations showing various stages of kidney stone disease you will need to know and you need to learn about the technique of making these illustrations at various phases if you are a medical student you may need to you know decorate your answer with these illustrations the questions may be pathogenic effects of kidney stone disease or else how would the kidney stone disease get complicated if you are a practicing urologist you need to draw these illustrations to explain to a patient what will go wrong to his kidney if he does not get his stone treated in time and this problem of not getting treatment in time is fairly common in developing country such as ours where myriads of other ways of treating stones are popular so we will see today how to make an illustration for kidney stones uh, traditionally when you draw a kidney illustration you have been drawing right kidney you know like this it's a bean shaped structure and then cerebral system is drawn like this this is the ureter and you draw one calyx here either calyx here and either calyx here but when you draw the left kidney you should know that the outline of the left kidney has a small little hump on the convex border like this this is called dromedary hump this is because of the spleen compressing this part of the kidney and then you draw the pelvis and ureter like this and this is the typical way one would draw a kidney right and left but when you have to draw it for stone and you want to show the pathological Uh, consequences that take place in the kidney you need to be or you may be little different and uh, let me explain what i am saying may be different you should draw first the ureter this is the ureter that you are drawing and then you start making pelvis and in the pelvis here is the stone this is the stone which is blocking the pelvic outlet and as a result of this there is occurring a certain amount of ballooning in the cerebral system and this is the normal renal parenchyma correct so if you go re reverse it is slightly easy for you and you can show that if the patient does not get the stone treated what will happen to him is that this ureter will stay the same the stone will over the period of time will grow inwards inside the kidney become bigger over a period of time and then the degree of cerebral dilatation will also increase with degree of the hydronephrosis like that and the kidney parenchyma which was looking near normal will now become thinner and like that okay and if patient still does not get it treated and let it stay in the body for some time what will further happen is that the stone will be enlarging like that and then the cerebral system will be more hydronephrotic and kidney parenchyma will become still thinner and become thinner and irregular still thinner because of the atrophy of the parenchyma that's what will happen to the patient so you can show a where the stone is small degree of hydronephrosis is smaller relatively less parenchyma is preserved 
B, degree of hydrogen process has increased as a consequence of growing stone and parenchyma becoming thinner and C, parenchyma more thinned out because of increasing stone size. If you want, you can hatch the stone, you can hatch the stone to make it more clear, like that. So this is what is called uncomplicated stone disease. There is increasing hydronephrosis in the kidney, but there is no complication that has taken place so far. If patient is not getting treated even now, what can also happen is that secondary stones start developing in the dilated calices. These are called calicial stones and this is a pelvic calculus. Let's see now how to show the complications occurring as a result of stone in the kidney and that what would be called as complicated stone disease. So stone disease is uncomplicated kidney stone disease and complicated kidney stone disease. In a complicated kidney stone disease, same ureter and a same kind of stone in the pelvis and the hydronephrosis right and the parenchyma what may happen is that after some time patients would develop uh, some degree of infection in this kidney and this infection you can show by these dots. This infection is because of stagnation of urine in the kidney and then bacteria secondarily inoculating this pool of urine. So you get what is called infected hydronephrosis. Right? The patient starts having fever, increasing flank pain and may be sick because of this infection. So this is occurrence of infection in the dilated kidney, right? So you can make infection like this, just to show there is some bacterial growth. So this is one complication. If the patient is not treated still, this infection will not only remain confined to the pelicalicial system, this is the stone and this is the pelvis, dilated calyx and from here this infection will travel in the parenchyma. From here this infection will travel in the parenchyma and will create parenchymal focus of infection. Now this is what is called focal nephritis, focal infection, this here and this will result in a parenchymal bulge. This is here, this is here and here you get a parenchymal bulging. This is because this infection which was initially present as infected hydronephrosis now through the collecting duct or through the renal tubules it starts moving into the parenchyma to create a focus of infection in parenchyma. But this focus of infection in parenchyma is still not superative so it's a non-superative infection right it's a non-superative infection and called focal pyelonephritis. Patient will have same flank pain, same fever, you can have same dotting done all over here. This is the bulge. A patient does not get treated even now, this focus of infection which is uh, as non-superative, non-superative will become superative. 
and this is hydrophotic kidney, this calyx here and this calyx here which is sending infection. What will now happen that this infection which travelled to the collecting duct into the parenchyma will now liquefy. Periphery will still have the some kind of granulation tissue, but in the center you get liquefaction. Okay, and this is what is called an abscess, a renal abscess. This is a renal abscess. So this one is non-superative stage, and this is a superative stage of renal abscess. And the patient if is still not uh, treated. What will happen eventually that this abscess will rupture outside from kidney and will increase in the perinatric space. It can go to any extent to develop into a big one and this one will travel more inferiorly because of the gravity and you get a huge thing here and this is a perinatric abscess. Right? So you can develop, the patient can develop three stages of infection. First stage, infected hydronephrosis A. Second stage B, the stage of renal focal nephritis. Stage C, either a renal parenchymal abscess or a large perinephric abscess. You can hedge this area of perinephric abscess if you want to, to show it more clearly. If you have time, you can do this, but if you do not have time, you can just still leave it as it is. So this is perinephric abscess. So these are these three things or three stages of infective complication that take place. Right? So you can go on doing this till the end. You can do it faster if you want to. Right? You can do it same way all over. Some patients do not develop infection and they just uh, you know go on with the non-infective back pressure effect on the kidney or the infection is such that it is slow growing and does not manifest as fever and abscess. In these patients you get progressive parenchymal atrophy and one would get from a normal looking kidney, a normal looking kidney is this, this is a normal looking kidney, such a good parenchyma and you would end up with, eventually they end up with, with a stone which is a big one in the pelvis and then this is a hydronephrosis of variable degree and then the parenchyma is very very thin. They get a small kidney which is hydronephrotic yet it is small because of very thin parenchyma. So it loses its function. So the normal kidney will become an atrophic kidney. Some patients who are very unfortunate who have this kind of thing for a very long time maybe 15 years, 20 years we have seen some stances of uh, uh, stances of a cancer developing either in the pelvis and when you have to show cancer you can show red when you show cancer you have to show it red this is how it is a cancer patch this starts from the pelvic wall it is usually squamous cell carcinoma because chronic irritation will cause uh, cancer from the uh, epithelial cells which have changed from transitional to squamous. So some patients develop as a result of stone a cancer in the renal pelvis, this is squamous cell cancer. We have seen this uh, in fair number of times. So that's what you can develop. So that's what you can draw to show various stages of changes in the kidney stone disease. The kidney stone disease as you know is very common. So once you learn 
to make illustrations explaining various stages of kidney stone disease. It's going to be handy for you for a long time. I suggest that you take a piece of paper now, begin right now and start drawing these illustrations. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.